This is where a U.S. military strike took out Qasem Soleimani, the leader of Iran's elite Quds force. We first learned that it was a missile that took down a Ukrainian airliner over Iran because of this video showing the moment of impact. All 176 people on board were killed. NASA's test mission just discovered its first circumbinary planet, a world orbiting two stars instead of one. Named TOI 1338b, it's nearly the size of Saturn. Now, Donald Trump has become only the third U.S. president to be impeached. Uh, the Democrat-controlled House of Representatives last night approved two charges, uh, setting up a trial next month in the Senate. We're going to begin here with the outbreak of a mystery virus in China that now has the World Health Organization on edge. At least four people have died and hundreds more are sick, though there are concerns five times as many people could be infected. A drastic measure, China ordering a quarantine for the entire city of Wuhan. 11 million people, no travel in or out, where the contagious coronavirus was first detected and is spreading fast. We now have a name for the disease, and it is COVID-19. And what we just witnessed today, <laughs> uh, that was brutal. Obviously brutal. I mean, the markets rushed toward a place to say we have to start handicapping the probabilities of, uh, of a recession in this country. The U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, has insisted it is the right time to withdraw American troops from Afghanistan, 20 years after they first went in, following the 9-11 attacks. We have therefore made the assessment that COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. Pandemic is not a word to use lightly or carelessly. The Union of European Football Associations has postponed the 2020 Euro Championship until June next year. Now to another grim milestone, the world surpassing one million deaths from the coronavirus. This is Bhatla, India's most ambitious solar project designed to generate 2,255 megawatts of power once fully operational. Hindustan ko bachane ke liye हिंदुस्तान के हर नागरिक को बचाने के लिए आपको बचाने के लिए आपके परिवार को बचाने के लिए आज रात 12 बजे से घरों से बाहर निकलने पर पूरी तरह पाबंदी लगाई जा रही है From this evening I must give the British people a very simple instruction You must stay at home weeks to go now to the beginning of the Summer Olympics in Japan. Preparations, though, have been hard hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. And as many as 80% of the Japanese say they want the Olympics called off, but the Japanese government and the International Olympic Committee insist the huge event will go ahead. Now, there have now been over 10 million reported cases of coronavirus worldwide, and more than half a million people worldwide have lost their lives. The virus pandemic is showing no signs of slowing down, with global deaths expected to hit 2 million today. Now, a tiger at a zoo in New York has tested positive for coronavirus. The four-year-old female named Nadia is thought to have contracted it from a keeper at the Bronx Zoo. The Prime Minister of Japan, Shinzo Abe, has this morning declared a state of emergency. Meanwhile, Ebola has resurfaced in the Democratic Republic of Congo. This is said to be the fourth outbreak in the last three years. To the latest on the coronavirus emergency. Overnight, the number of confirmed cases worldwide surpassed 19 million. After weeks of clashes, European finance ministers have agreed to a coronavirus rescue package that's worth more than half a trillion dollars. The plan will help mitigate some of the fallout from the pandemic and help member states get back on their feet. So now, under the assumption that the pandemic and required containment peaks in the second quarter in most countries in the world and then recedes in the second half of this year, we are projecting global growth in 2020 to fall to minus 3%. Today, I'm instructing my administration to halt funding of the World Health Organization while a review is conducted to assess the World Health
health organization's role in severely mismanaging and covering up the spread of the coronavirus. Cycling's most prestigious race has been postponed over the coronavirus pandemic. The sport's governing body announced the Tour de France will now begin on August 29th. Paris has seen a second night of rioting over the course French police have been too heavy-handed in the treatment of ethnic minorities during the coronavirus lockdown. Iran's Revolutionary Guard says the country is now able to, quote, monitor the world from space after successfully launching its first military satellite into orbit. The U.S. has accused Iran in the past of using its space program as a cover for missile development, allegations Iran denies. The world has surpassed a grim milestone. The pandemic has taken away four million lives across the globe. A grim milestone in the history of the coronavirus pandemic. According to figures from Johns Hopkins University, COVID-19 deaths have passed the three million mark. Researchers here in Kenya have identified a microbe in mosquitoes that is capable of blocking transmission from the insects to people. This is the first ever image of a black hole, released by the Event Horizon Telescope collaboration on April 10th, 2019. And in breaking news coming in from India, where an intrusion by Chinese troops led to clashes between troops of both the countries, Indian Army foiled the attempt which happened three days back. And new research from the University of Washington is now predicting nearly 300,000 deaths by... The United Nations is asking governments that as the pandemic crisis drags on, not to forget the mental health toll that is having on many people. As we speak, there is a powerful storm slamming into... Well, Russia has announced it is pulling out of the Open Skies Treaty. Moscow points to Washington's withdrawal last year, saying it seriously compromised the agreement. The pact allows member countries to conduct unarmed surveillance flights over military facilities. The U.S. left this treaty back in November, accusing Russia of violating it, something Moscow denies. Good afternoon and welcome. Let's start with breaking news coming in. A Pakistan International Airlines plane designated PK-8303 has crashed at a Karachi suburb. As per sources, the plane was carrying over 90 passengers and was en route from Lahore to Karachi. The plane was asked to do a go-round after the captain informed air traffic controller about a technical snag. According to the latest information available, the plane crashed as its landing gear failed to deploy. Several houses have been damaged in the residential area and relief and rescue operations have begun at the site. Out there talking. Mining giant Rio Tinto has fronted a parliamentary inquiry this morning over the destruction of a 46,000-year-old indigenous site in WA's Pilbara region. Cities across the United States remain in a state of high tension tonight as the country braces itself for another wave of protests over the death of George Floyd. The unarmed Mr. Floyd, who was black, died in Minneapolis after being pinned to the ground by a white police officer. He was the latest in a string of African-American men to die through police action. There have been protests in at least 30 U.S. cities, with violence, looting and arson in some, and several cities have imposed curfews. Tonight, cries of Black Lives Matter and hands up, don't shoot. Hands up, don't shoot! Echoing from coast to coast. The largest day of demonstrations for George Floyd yet. In Washington, crowds stretching from the Lincoln Memorial to Black Lives Matter Plaza in front of the White House. South America's largest carrier filed for U.S. bankruptcy protection on Tuesday. The move by LATAM Airlines comes just weeks after Colombia's Avianca went bust. But while Avianca had undergone management turmoil and losses, Chile's LATAM had posted profits for the last four years of more than $700 million. Thousands of travelers were stranded today at airports from Detroit to Tel Aviv when the bargain airline WOW shut down without any warning. Here's Chris Van Cleef. WOW Air left stranded customers saying, whoa, as the airline abruptly canceled flights and shut down Thursday, leaving about 4,000 travelers stuck mid-trip. Five, four, three, two, 
one, zero. Ignition. Lift off of the Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon. Go NASA. Go SpaceX. Godspeed. Bottom dog. In May, millions tuned in to watch NASA and SpaceX make history. And so rises a new era of American space flight, and with it the ambitions of a new generation continuing the dream. The launch of SpaceX's Crew Dragon capsule to the International Space Station marked the first time that NASA astronauts took off from U.S. soil since 2011. Gueke, in Guinea's forest region, the epicenter of the new Ebola outbreak. At the regional health center, UN health workers dispatch from Conakry to treat the patients in isolation. It's the biggest government action against Silicon Valley in a generation. The Department of Justice and 11 states filed a lawsuit against Google on Tuesday, accusing the search giant and its $1 trillion parent company Alphabet of abusing its dominance to muscle out rivals. In China's new national security law for Hong Kong has been greeted with protests in the territory and condemnation from the international community. The legislation passed yesterday gives Beijing powers to shape life in Hong Kong as never before. Footage released by the Russian Investigative Committee suggests the sheer volume of the spillage overwhelmed the concrete levees intended to contain minor leaks. Tens of thousands of tons of diesel escaped into the surrounding area. Now, let's talk about the Indian Army, which is saying 20 of its soldiers have been killed by Chinese troops in the disputed Kashmir region. This is the first deadly clash on this border in 45 years. China, for its part, is accusing India of crossing the border and attacking its personnel. Our top focus at this hour, 50 pro-democracy activists have been arrested in Hong Kong under the new national security law imposed by Beijing. This happens to be the biggest crackdown yet against the pro-democracy activists under the new national security law. Floods. The streets of Wuhan are filled with waist-deep water. It's been pouring non-stop rains and conspiracy theories. The word on the street is that the flooding is not natural. Our next report. Social media giant Twitter has been hacked in one of the most daring cyber attacks in recent times. Some of the most prominent Twitter handles across the world, as well as in the United States, were targeted in what appears to be a Bitcoin scam. Almost 4 million people in India and Nepal have been displaced by heavy flooding from monsoon rains. NASA's latest Mars rover, Perseverance, will investigate these questions by collecting Martian rock and soil samples that may one day return to Earth. The UAE is set to become the Arab world's first nuclear power in a matter of weeks. The Baraka nuclear power plant under construction since 2012 will finally begin functioning as the first of its four nuclear reactors will start operations. an investigation into the blast, as we just heard, and how 2,750 tons of the explosive chemical ammonium nitrate could be stored at this site. Now, we can see just how powerful the blast was by comparing before and after photos of the site. Take a look at this. Here we have a look at the harbor before the blast. We know the fire brigade was finding a blaze in the building that is circled in red. And now you see after the blast. Not only has the building been completely obliterated, so has the ground underneath it, leaving a water-filled crater and complete destruction around that area. Investigation has also been ordered into the Air India crash light uh, crash uh, last night at the Calicut uh, airport. Initial reports are suggesting that the aircraft missed the approach in the first time and overshot the runway during the second attempt. The streets of Minsk, Belarus's capital, filled with protesters. Riot police pushed back against the demonstrators, deploying water cannon and firing tear gas and rubber bullets. The Russian president, Vladimir Putin, says his country has registered the world's first, very first, according to him, coronavirus vaccine. In fact, he said his own daughter has taken it and that it works effectively. The vaccine is called Sputnik V after the first satellite launched into space. July 25th, a Japanese tanker carrying nearly 4,000 tons of fuel was on its way to Brazil from China when it struck the reef on the southeast coast of the island. The ship has since leaked an estimated 1,000 tons of oil. 
delighted with the, uh, the with the announcement of you know uh, polio pre in Nigeria and Africa at large. Uh, it's a welcome development. We need on what could be one of the strongest storms ever to hit this country. Her name is Hurricane Laura. She made landfall as a Category 4 near Cameron, Louisiana at 1 o'clock this morning local time. Maximum sustained winds were recorded at 150 miles an hour. Hundreds of thousands have already lost power on a day. Uh... India's daily coronavirus death toll has reached a record high with 4,300 uh, people reported dead on Tuesday. These are the bones of Ice Age mammoths, the largest land mammals to ever set foot on the American continent. They're seeing the light of day for the first time in more than 20,000 years. Animal remains from the Pleistocene era were first discovered in this part of Mexico in the 1970s, but archaeologists say those previous discoveries pale in comparison. Haishun came howling ashore, pummeling this southeast corner of South Korea, the second destructive typhoon within a matter of days. After slowly creeping along the Gulf Coast for days, Hurricane Sally barreling onto land just before 5 a.m. My neighbor's pool is under the bayou right now. Unleashing 100 mile an hour winds, <laughs> ripping down trees and traffic lights, blowing out walls, leaving homes and businesses destroyed. The ceasefire between Armenia and Azerbaijan is due to come into effect in around three hours. It follows two weeks of intensive fighting over the disputed region of Nagorno-Karabakh. Every day, somewhere in the world, someone dies or loses a limb because they stepped on a landmine. The weapons of war are left behind to kill and maim civilians long after conflicts have ended. In the case of the Falkland Islands, it's been almost 40 years. Now, people there can finally, safely walk on the beaches again, thanks in part to a treaty signed here in Canada. In a major announcement, NASA has revealed the discovery of water ice on the sun's surface of the moon. Now, the discovery is being seen as a big boost for NASA's plans to establish a permanent lunar base by the end of the decade. Friday's earthquake was centered in the Aegean Sea, close to Izmir, Turkey's third largest city. At least a dozen people were killed and several buildings were leveled. The big story that we are tracking, the U.S. elections and the U.S. Democrat Joe Biden took a huge step Wednesday in capturing the White House with wins in Michigan and Wisconsin, bringing him close to a majority. But President Donald Trump responded, alleging mass fraud and demanding a halt to vote counting. That he out of that catastrophic hurricane, making landfall overnight. Iota slamming into hard-hit Central America as a powerful Category 4 storm, just 15 miles from where Ada devastated the area earlier this month. As temperatures slowly rise and the threats from climate change become more obvious, I am surrounded by fire. The leadership of a once dominant force on the world stage is eroding. So we're getting out. President Trump has officially started the process of leaving the non-binding treaty, a pact that nearly the entire globe remains a part of. Global COVID-19 infections have surpassed 50 million as of Sunday. This is the news that we've been waiting to hear. Pfizer and BioNTech reporting the first results from their phase three vaccine trial, saying that in this interim look, the vaccine showed to be more than 90% effective in preventing COVID-19 cases. Some updates from Russia now, where the coronavirus vaccine Sputnik V has shown 91.4% efficacy based on data analysis of the final control point of clinical trials. Among that top story is late stage trials showing the AstraZeneca Oxford COVID vaccine can be up to 90 percent effective. Make we start this hour with breaking news and Iran's defense ministry has confirmed that one of the country's top nuclear scientists has been assassinated. Iranian media outlets say Mohsin Fakhrizadeh died of his wounds after gunmen fired on his car. Fakhrizadeh has long been regarded by Israel and Western intelligence agencies as the mastermind behind the country's covert nuclear weapons program. 
Andrew, it's a pretty big milestone. Pfizer and its partner BioNTech say that today they will submit their application to the FDA for emergency use authorization of their COVID-19 vaccine. Britain has approved the coronavirus vaccine by pharmaceutical partners Pfizer and BioNTech, becoming the first country in the world to do so. The UK government says the shot will be available across the country from next week. The vaccine is the result of a collaboration between US drug maker Pfizer and German company BioNTech. U.S. President Donald Trump has ordered the removal of most American soldiers from Somalia by early 2021. In Russia, a mass vaccination effort against COVID-19 is underway. Russia, the first country to distribute the vaccine to the public, it was developed in the country and health officials there claim it is 95% effective. The potential turning point millions have been waiting for. With approval this morning, people in the UK can start getting the Pfizer vaccine early next week. The first Western country to move from the trial phase to vaccinating the public. And Nepal and China are set to jointly announce the revised height of Mount Everest, the world's highest peak. The Nepal government had decided to measure the exact height of the mountain amid debates that there might have been a change in its height due to various reasons. European Union leaders have reached a hard-fought deal to make dramatic cuts to the EU's greenhouse gas emissions. After all-night talks, the member states agreed to reduce emissions by 55% by the end of the decade. This is a historic day uh, today. This is the moment uh, that the fight against COVID uh, begins in earnest. After months of research and clinical trials, the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine delivery underway. Millions of doses being distributed across the country. The FDA moments ago approved Moderna's vaccine for emergency use. This clears the way for the rollout across the country to begin. New analysis has confirmed that the new variant of coronavirus has a much quicker transmission rate than the original strain. Researchers at Imperial College London say that even with a lockdown similar to that in England in November, the number of cases would still triple and that this was the most serious change in the virus that we've seen. It's one of the most remote regions in the world, Antarctica, and has been COVID-free until now. The first cases of COVID-19 were reported earlier this week at a Chilean military research base. Yeah, Mandy and Vic, it's all about looking up, and we've been doing it all summer at Jupiter and Saturn, and I want you to look up just above the moon here tonight. You can see them in that night sky. These two planets, these giant planets, are going to be the closest they've been in just a few days. It's been hundreds of years. After months of uncertainty, Britain and the European Union have finally struck an agreement on a post-Brexit trade deal. The two sides managed to patch up their differences at the 11th hour to avert, avert an encroaching crisis as the end of the 12-month transition period approached. A powerful earthquake has struck central Croatia, causing damage in several cities, including the capital Zagreb. According to the European Mediterranean Seismological Centre, the magnitude 6.4 event struck some 50 kilometres southeast of the capital. Official reports say it caused widespread destruction, collapsing roofs, the facades of buildings and entire buildings. The tremors also prompted the precautionary shutdown of a nuclear power plant in neighbouring Slovenia. Forward in the fight against coronavirus as the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine is approved by the UK regulator. The government has ordered 100 million doses and the first vaccinations will take place on Monday. 